Hi there, it's Paulie here. Yeah, so uh, years ago, uh, there was a wonderful, wonderful gamer, Craig Rizbecki. Um, I've lost track of him. Um, that's a surprisingly hard name to search for on social media. Polish, W, uh, Y, X, bing, blah, 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 I don't know. Um, anyway, um, he was a guy who had this talent for overturning people's expectations and making adventures sort of where you didn't really expect them. Um, hilarious stuff. He did this fantastic game for us. So uh, it was Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I had taken a female character, inevitably, and um, I was kind of looking at that stage like D D, it's all about killing and hurting and swords through heads and slash and hack and steal and brutalize and rape and maim no it's like it's people have to live in a society that's stupid um magic user seriously what spells if you, you've only got limited spells like you you've you've only in your spell book to start off with you've only got like three maybe four spells tops this is all right so what would be your actual priority to learn i looked at it and said, oh. unseen servant absolutely that's priority one you will never have to wash the dishes again. Uh, something cleans the room. Something tidies stuff for you. Something does all the paperwork. Something does the ironing. Um, you know, <laughs> something gives you foot, foot massage. Fantastic. Priority one. Um, it's also got 101 kind of adventure utilities. Love that spell. But anyway, um, priority one. Says, all right. What else are you taking? Priority two. Said, uh, all right. Um, actually, as we flip through the spells, there was a thing in there. Uh, I think it was called Glamour. What does that do? Glamour. Fantastic. Look at this. Um, you cast on yourself and for a few hours, it's going to um, increase your charisma by, I think, 1d4 or 1d4 plus 1, um, which, since I was already about um, 18, put me on spectacular godlike levels, but it also makes people like you. Um, they just generally like you and tend to generally agree with you unless it goes against their interests somehow, in which case they have to do a, a saving throw. But in general, when you turn up, everyone just like, bing, hey, this person's here, yay, life is better now. So, it's a social lubricant spell. Fantastic. That would absolutely be um, priority number one. Uh, so, yep, that goes down there. Says, oh, well, you've got um, two more. So, all right, well, um, there was a very, very kind of low-level um, illusion spell. Might even have been Dancing Lights, I think. Um, okay, Dancing Lights. Um, and, all right, one last one. All right, I, I want a non-violent combative kind of thing, just in case there's trouble or something somewhere. Or, you know, you never know. Sleep, obviously. Says, Right, there we go. Um, you have all these kind of skill slots, which again, uh, what are you going to use for killing, hacking, maiming, mutilating, and you know, stepping people in the eye sockets? Says, I'm not. Well, don't. No, that's stupid. Um, no, we try and get through life without this. But we can spend these on cool things, and if we kind of pour, put double slots, you're really very good at it. Says, all right, uh, dancing. Well, dancing. Yep, that's what my character does. Um, started off as a temple dancer, but, you know, went into just general, uh, you know, dancing. This is this person's skill. It's their, their cool spell. Oh, and what's the other... you got another thing. Says, oh, uh, uh, I'll take kind of... Um, yeah, yeah, I'll take... Um, all right, politics. What? Well, politics, yeah. Uh, keep my ear to the ground, um, you know, um, know what's going on, and, you know... Uh, uh, goes well with the uh, the charisma says oh okay well there we go fantastic well, that's what your character will do we get into town and oh, big old city but uh, we got no money uh, oh oh well uh, there are really kind of ritzy 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 taverns in the um kind of noble end of town so well we definitely can't afford to stay there um let's see if we can find one in the kind of uh, more interesting kind of docklandy section that might be used to more travelers coming through yes we f we find a good one it's um s it's sort of in the slightly dodgy end of town but it's a it's a popular one and uh, okay we've got to find some work within a couple of days because you know this is our last gold pieces are going on the road and food and accommodation so i said wait well will i let people perform here so um yeah yeah if you're any good like um you know any imbecile can't just you know pick up a loot and strum you have to actually have a skill but if so sure you are um, you are welcome to uh, right um okay yeah yeah i'm gonna dance attend i'm gonna dance i'm really good at it but i come with special effects i will dance and the glamour spell goes on so you know on comes this sodding goddess plus the moment this person 
enters the room with a spell on, it's like, oh, everyone just feels feels really good. Hey, the world just got a bit better because this person's up on stage. Um, oh, I've got dancing lights. So I come with my own special effects. You know, I've got sparkles, I've got lights, I've got, you know, um, swirls and um, zooms and twinkles and so on going and starbursts. Um, you know, like, you know, it can all be part of the act. Um, actually, that would be pretty spectacular. Says, yeah, no, right? Uh, so, okay, well, let's just do a roll, see how that went. You know, max out the roll and everything. So it's like, wow, that goes over fantastically. You know, cheers. Um, yeah, the encore, encore, encore. Uh, so you're asked on, like, uh, again, um, about an hour after the first thing, and then again an hour after that. Oh, okay, that's good. So, so uh, like, we're there the evening doing, doing you know, a couple of song routines. Says, Absolutely. And you come out of this with you. Know, uh, yeah, you get about 12 gold pieces in... Um, um, you know, tips and so on. Talk or pieces. Wait, that's really good. What? In fact, shit, if I was doing that every night, well, that's about, well, that's actually huge pay. That's, you know, more than 80 gold pieces a week. This is a good, this is a business. This is fantastic. I'll do this. If they'll have me, yeah, look, I'll do this. Oh, yeah, no, they'll, if you're going to make this a regular gig, they'll, they'll even advertise it. Um, so that, you know, more people come, because they sold a lot of drinks. Says, sure, absolutely. So, a couple of the other player characters, a um, couple of those were female, and uh, they wait, hang on, I just took dancing as a vague thing, and a couple of them were musicians. Oh, yeah, we took music and so on. Well, you can be the, you can be, you can be the musicians for the dance. Well, it can be an actual act that we do. So, yeah, yeah, let's do this. And so, by the way, this is kind of a slightly dodgy um, tavern so it says so what's the what's what's the kind of geist of the dance it says, oh it's kind of sexy it's kind of smoky it's um you know torch numbers and all this sort of thing uh it can be the slinky silk dress but um we can also do the whole spectacular kind of if we get some money for costumes we can do some spectacular kind of showgirl stuff um you know the the, the feather headdresses the um um uh, the um little feather fans on our asses that sort of thing it says, Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. So, right, so what the umpire then did was, he kind of, now, bearing in mind that this is years ago, he kind of predicted the plunge of the USA, already an idiotic nation, uh, into the absolute right-wing lip-strumming lunacy it's in today. So, essentially, this ultra-right wing begins to turn up. So... There's a couple of fighters in the party, so they end up sort of having to be um, bodyguards against these right-wing agitators that start turning up and complaining against all of these shows. And these guys who are complaining, they've actually got sort of um, saboteurs and so on who turn up. So there actually gets to be this whole kind of intrigue thing going on. And the politics comes in where we are having to actually, you know, this is ridiculous, what's going on? Because there's lots of people coming to us and complaining and people are being like um framed for crimes they didn't do and all sorts of things so we're, we're busting people out of prison and so on then this ultra right group managed to essentially kind of like stage a coup and they take over the whole city so it becomes you know essentially a a lawful good city they become essentially it's Oliver Cromwellian, ultra-right-wing, kind of Puritan, crazy bullshit city. And up come all these ordinances, you know, no drink, no merriment, um, um, you know, and definitely no, definitely no hoochie dancing or, um, or smouldering um, torch numbers <laughs> sung by people in slinky dresses. Ha! Ever! Um, um, the gods frown upon it. So, um, the dance club goes underground. So it became this fantastic kind of... Um, uh, Robin Hood mixed with sort of Casablanca, where we're uh, we're ducking and dodging and um, we're having to go underground. The 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 government, the bad guys, have essentially got ninja spies who are trying to you know f f um, sneak into shows, um, trying to um, um, you know get the dirt on people, trying to arrest people. So there's sort of this whole kind of thing. thing. Meanwhile, we're actually helping. Um, people oppressed by the regime uh we've got a um, underground railway network that's um, smuggling people out and where the money that we're raising we're actually sending out to fund um rebels who will hopefully come back and um overthrow the government so we're making the money to buy the weapons we've managed to get um a lot of the top blacksmiths and all this sort of stuff smuggled out of town and uh, it was it was hilarious but 
we're trying to come up with the whole idea of what the hell to do um, with the show because now we need the money to fund the revolution. And so, right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I got this idea. Yes, right, I get the idea. So it's like, wait, these guys are rules crazed. So we trap them in their own rules. So we stop their whole thing of trying to shut us down. How? So look, their, their writ of law there's a three mile limit offshore it only extends three miles out to sea so we don't run the parties in the city at all we run them three miles offshore where by their own rules it's none of their business we hire some kind of boat or ship uh our the people who are going to like you know attend the parties and so on come on board we sail three miles out and we party all night and then we come back and drop them off ta-da um it doesn't break the law because nothing that we've done is against the law because three miles out their law doesn't hold anymore uh so it'll be a bit expensive hiring the boat but on the other hand we can make it more of a sort of kind of party night and um yeah we run the party boats oh, okay however these guys have these uh, laws which mean that um, merchants coming into the city have to pay a license so ooh, a lot of the ships no they don't want to do this because they think these guys will like withhold them a trading license so they won't be able to offload cargo but we do find there is one kind of somewhat shabby old ship and um yeah the 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 captain that runs it um and his first mate are both basically um old alcoholics um so they're just kind of slumping about the place they've got two or three essentially incompetent crew who just kind of live on board um but they don't unload or anything they just kind of live on the boat um so they don't mind if this license wouldn't be given to them and it turns out yeah yeah they really welcome the job because it means they could get some you know repairs and maintenance done on the boat right sold so yes we uh, oh we send all these things out uh, we um uh, and yeah yeah look a lot of the um the actual wealthy in this place they're actually quite keen on these whole things but they're a bit worried about um you know being caught by the law so some of the old nobles and so on that used to turn up and all these guys they will be um probably keen to turn up if it's this way and they can't really you know get much blame for it particularly if they can come on board anonymously like if they sort of all come on board masked and so on so that's it yeah everyone comes on board sort of masked so you can't tell who it is so and uh, we can um they, they can have their people arranged to sort of you know whisk them to and from in um in um covered coaches or covered um um sedan chairs and so on so yeah 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 that's great so they can turn up anonymously so we kind of use the politics skills, advertise this thing out there, and yes, we get a rush of these guys on board. Yay! Hey, we made this made real money. Yay! Viva the revolution! Yay! Quick, we get the money immediately sent off by our couriers, and let's sail the boat out. Off it goes. Off outside the three mile. The umpire, being a complete asshole, um, ah, we're out there, yes, um, um, we're, we're there, full showgirl habits, feathers and uh, feathers and fans, do 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 do, ah, uh, the show goes over pretty well, pretty well, uh, until it gets a bit short of midnight when the wind comes up. Oh, the wind comes up. Uh, all right, well we'll go out, we'll check with the um, we'll check. <laughs> We'll check with the crew. It says, um, hey, crew. What? What's happened? What? The crew have gone. What? You can't find the captain. You can't find the crew. We can't find the captain. We can't find the crew. What? Where are they? Don't know. The boat's gone as well. What? The boat's gone? The what? The, the little kind of... Yeah, yeah, the jolly boat's gone. The jolly boat has gone. Where are they gone? It's, you know, you, you can't see them. Um, we figure out they, they might have actually gotten rather frightened of the... Um, storm that looked like was brewing an abandoned ship but uh, shit they've gone uh well um uh, look if this is a it, it's a yeah it's a boat right it's got a rudder and it's got sails how hard can it be to operate this uh um how are the um how are the um um the the, the passengers um well they're mostly kind of um the the, the, the they're drinking what they're drinking yeah, yeah they're drinking really heavily in fact what oh come on guys let's oh shit okay uh actually fine let them drink uh we'll we'll, we'll we'll try and figure out how uh, uh uh storms um you 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 sail away from storms i think unless it gets way too uh, dangerous in which case you try and sail into them um but we're gonna uh i guess we try and it's a serious storm yeah serious storm now uh all right we'll we'll just 
we'll, we'll let her run before the wind. That should be pretty easy. Uh, all right. Uh, yes, we um, make some spectacular skill roll kind of passes and some spectacular skill roll fails. And this ship just gets driven before the storm. Um, uh, sails splitting everywhere. Hoist the thing and the other thing. Arr, throw, throw biscuits to the wind, sir. Yay, the Nikki Naranu. Uh, yeah. Um, and for days. The storm just runs for days and days and days. Some of the rich guys, basically, they get another boat and they decide they can see land somewhere. We're going to get in the boat. And the, no, guys, don't get in the boat and run for land. Uh, but, um, guys, don't, oh, okay, a bunch of rich guys have jumped out and gone on a boat for land. Uh, no, we're staying with the big one. Well, eventually, um, this thing, we see a cove on some kind of shore, so we drive this thing to this bay, and it gets driven up onto sand. Oh, okay, vumph. And the storm batters it, but, you know, we, we are ashore. And then, eventually, the storm dissipates, and, yes, we step down. <sighs> yes, the um, the ship is thoroughly aground on a sandy, sandy shore. Okay, and, uh, yeah, it's some kind of tropical island. The umpire says, yes, you can see sand, uh, the cove, uh, like palm trees, big old coconuts or something growing out of them, um, lots of ferns, um, some strange-coloured parrots. <laughs> I see some monkeys in the trees like oh god help us uh yeah off in the far distance yeah there's this big kind of slightly conical looking mountain um like the top's been snipped off a bit of smoke coming of that Pshh. um but that's okay because um there's obviously some kind of uh, inhabitants here because uh there's some kind of huge uh, part of that the face of the um, um that huge mountain has been carved into a giant skull um, <laughs> there might be an entrance through the mouth of that is, oh god yeah and you can hear some some drums somewhere in the distance. Doom, boom, 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 doom, boom. Oh, crap. Uh, says, and uh, we didn't even pack, like, normal clothes, did we? Because we were going out for a show. It says, um, no, no, you, you, you just packed your showgirl gear and, um, you know, a couple of costume changes and um, the stuff that you were wearing, um, you know, while you were hoisting sails and so on, uh, uh, you know, it's just a couple of sails, jackets and so on you found, like, lying around the place. Right. So, so... Wrecked ship on the sand, yeah. We're standing there on a tropical beach, basically dressed in um, sequins, sequins glitter and uh, feather headdresses. Yes. Even the guys we had as um, bouncers are, uh, says, yeah, they're really just, they're part of the show. So, you know, they're wearing bits and pieces of costume as well. So, fantastic. Let's go. Yes. Uh, whole cannibal island. Um, uh, T-Rexes stalking through the jungle. Um, uh, dread tiki god. Um... <laughs> Yeah, you know, a whole dungeon but inside the volcano through the skull mouth. Fantastic. And all had to be done by, essentially, I think we were by now, like, second or third level characters, uh, whose equipment was essentially um, some makeup and glitter. Um, fantastic campaign. Great time. Built from, from nothing. Nothing except an umpire who's willing to listen to people's kind of cool ideas and run with them and build an adventure around what those ideas had built so um yeah you know it was it was great stuff uh, an interesting guy good umpiring lessons there for everyone i think anyway craig rusbecki um quite a guy hilariously funny excellent umpire i hope he's still out there somewhere cheers